Welcome to my lair. Just kidding, the cats aren't allowed in here. Hi friends! So you may have noticed that I am not in my usual filming spot for my intros. That is because I found this super awesome chair, which was the last big thing that I was really looking for to finish my sewing room. A couple months ago, I kind of came to the conclusion that the room I was in was not working. It was very small, very cramped, very dark, and that was just not lending itself to me being productive at all. Because of the way the room was set up, I was actively having to move things around before I could even start sewing. And that just was adding more stress to something and making sewing not enjoyable. So I just wasn't getting anything done. My husband also realized that he needed an office space. So what we kind of figured out was he would put his office space where my old sewing space was and I would move my sewing space in here. This room used to be very dark and it was game room slash storage room that we really didn't change when we moved in. Almost the rest of the house we completely overhauled and this room we just kind of threw our bits and bobs in and said, eh, we'll deal with it later. Well, now it's later. And so I figured I would show you what we did to change this room. The setup I have going right now the things I wish I had and I will be adding to this room and things that I recommend people think about or possibly get for themselves if they are setting up their own sewing space. I watched a ton of sewing room tour, sewing room setup, sewing room overhaul videos when I was planning this room and those were super helpful to me. So I thought just kind of going through my process and showing you what I came up with would be maybe a little helpful for you as well. So we'll start with the room overhaul process, then I will show you my knickknacks and then talk through a few of my choices, why I made them and what I would recommend other people make for their sewing space. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. Hi, editing Katie here. I do realize that this video is super long, so if you are here specifically looking for tips about setting up your own sewing space, I will put timestamps in the description box so that you can jump straight to that and skip the sewing room tour if that's what you want. So this is basically what the room looked like when we moved in. This is in the middle of the cleaning process for our basement. It had a bar, a pool table, and a treadmill, and we just threw our futon down there and basically used it as a storage space. We added a ton of lighting, a few outlets, and then painted the ceiling black so that instead of the blue that it was before, it was a matte black and wouldn't be reflecting the light in weird ways. We also painted the walls a lighter color and cleaned and painted the floors as well because those were in dire need of help. We let the floors cure for a while and then moved in all of my furniture and I hung up knickknacks and things like that and this is what the room looks like now. So welcome to my sewing room. To start off, we have the door. And I thought we'd do that just because it's a nice little glimpse that nothing is perfect. And when we're on YouTube, when I'm showing you these things, it's all curated. So could I have skipped over the door and the fact that I only gave it one coat of paint? Yes, but I did. I only gave it one coat of paint and it looks like butt. And will I eventually do a second coat? Yes. Will it be any time within the next month? Uh, probably not. This is the setup you saw a bit of a minute ago. I have my serger there and my 
main sewing machine there and I really love having the rolly chair, the spinny chair, just because I can go right back and forth between the two without getting up and that makes my life a whole lot easier sometimes. Here I've got some thread, serger thread, embroidery thread, and I've just hung them from the ceiling because hanging things on cinder block walls is not the easiest. Same thing here, I've got a pegboard. I really love this. This is one of the things that if you are curating your own sewing room, I highly recommend. I have a ton of things just within reach that I can sit here in my chair and I can just reach up and I don't have to get up and get stuff. It makes sewing much quicker. Since I switch through projects so often, I tend to keep the bobbins and the thread for the projects I'm working on just right here within reach instead of putting them back with the rest of my bobbins. I keep any tools I might need to switch my feet and I keep my feet here. You know, random things like pins and seam rippers all stay here. Up here I've got all sorts of extra needles, any scissors I might need, pencils, rulers, etc, etc. Here I've got my little needle holder. She lives her life for suffering and I think that's very Russian of her. Anyway, thread, quilting stuff. These I don't need right at my sewing machine. I just keep them here because it's a good way to organize them and it looks nice. This is my sewing machine. Her name is Sophie. I love her dearly. This is another one of those things that I recommend highly to anyone sewing. It's just a little magnet, very convenient. And I have some plans to make her look a little prettier because she's not uh, at her best right now, but that will have to wait till after the baby and when it's a little warmer. Trash bin, very important. Here is my ironing setup. I do have a gravity feed iron. This setup is not permanent. It's temporary while my husband's building me a giant ironing table thing to go here. So that'll come. This little windowsill is where I hold extra ironing things. So I've got an arm here. I keep these big knitting needles to help turn corners. That's really useful. And if I had ham, it would go there as well. These are my mannequins. It has my current work, work in progresses on it and also part of my Foundations Revealed entry because I just don't know what else to do with it right now. So it's just hanging out there. This is Kevin. Kevin is my weirdly ripped mannequin. He's just like a retail mannequin that's sitting on a lamp base. Um, he needs a new lamp because I accidentally broke the cement that goes in there and uh, he falls over with a small breeze. So then we'll get new legs soon. Eventually I wanna get a form that's specifically for my body, like bootstrap or something like that, but that's, that's gonna have to wait a while. So there's that. On to my first lovely knickknacks. Something that I do is collect novelty teapots. Here are some of my favorites. They are food related. I can't help but adore a teapot that has a little teapot on it. But I just, I like keeping these here because they just make me happy and I can see them from my sewing table, so. This one does have his hat. It's just broken and I need to fix it. So right now he is hatless. This is a more utilitarian area. This is where I keep different hardware for stuff. These are really cute. My mother-in-law got them for me for Christmas. So I just keep them there. This is where I keep my bobbins that are already wound for my industrial machine. Here's tools, scrapbooking stuff, um, trims and elastics, more trims. Here is cording and corsetry stuff, zippers. This is mostly uh, painting stuff, but I also do have like Mod Podge and stuff in here as well. And interfacing, different 
sizes, sizes, strengths, whatever. It's a little ugly, but it works. If anybody has any tips for updating stuff like that to make it cuter, let me know. This is a thrifting find that I am extremely proud of. It's an old sewing desk. Uh, the mechanism for pulling up the sewing machine is broken, but that's okay because I don't want it. But it's really cool because in this first drawer, I got so excited. It has holders for little bobbins and pins. Like how cool is that? These are the size buttons that I use most often. And so I just keep them in here overflow from the trim section just kind of random stuff ends up in here but extra storage always very helpful here we are with that teapot with the teapot on it thing oh, I just love it so what I use this desk for is these sewing machines that aren't my industrial machine and I use for other reasons like decorative stitches or this one's really good with buttonholes things like that. This is something I highly recommend for crafters. It's from a makeup desk, but it's just this piece of smooth glass. And I put it down whenever I need to do like gluing or painting or anything like that. And it just protects my nice desk. So recommend that. It's a lifesaver. Another thing I'd recommend when you are planning out a sewing room is to kind of know your layout before you put electrical in and then to stagger your outlets in a way that's conducive to that. So over there I have them along the floor. Oh, well, you can't see that one. There he is. So I have them along the floor over there, but then over here I have one more easily accessible if I'm using my desk. These little ladies are vintage. They were in my grandma's house when I was growing up. She had various people bring them to her from Russia for different exchange programs. I love them. I think they're very pretty. They hold a lot of nostalgia for me. So they just sit here. You can see I did not cover up the windows before painting. So eventually I will have to go back and clean those up. Here is how I keep track of what I need to do when. I just kind of write everything out. I write myself reminder notes things I need to buy still, things I need to make still, doodle little reminders, you know, whatever I need to keep track of. That's where it ends up. This was given to me by my mother-in-law. It belonged to her mother. I think it belonged to her mother before her, so that's that's really special and I'm glad I have that. Love this, it's a little bee for Bauer and it was a set piece from Cabaret, which was the last show I was in, instead of just costuming, it had little light bulbs coming through here that I just covered with flowers. And it's just there reminding me. More storage. Storage is so, so important. I can't stress that enough. Here, I actually do use this picnic basket, but this is most of my historical wardrobe. It's got all of my accessories and my corsets and stays and yada yada. So that lives there. This, I buy a lot of thrift store sheets, especially white ones, to make mock-ups or historical undergarments or whatever, and they just live in there. Different drafting paper and my sad attempt at knitting that I started way too long ago. It was just hiding forlornly in there. Moving on, more knickknacks cute things. Surprise, surprise, more teapots. These are all of my animals. The pears should technically be over there with the rest of the fruit, but I don't love them as much. This was brought to me from Russia by one of my dear friends. It's hand painted, so I just keep it here. I don't actually use it. And then I made this in Japan. Sewing box, more teapots. Uh, that is quilting cotton for a quilt I'm currently working on. So they just kind of live there. Things that I'd like to hang up, random books. This is for a secret project coming up. It's just little china plates. I'll tell you about it later. 
here is my fabric hoard my fabric so this this is my fabric for work and then this is all mine <laughs> It looks very impressive, but other than six things I went through and counted when I organized it all, everything in here is thrifted or gifted to me. So I do have it organized in a certain way. I think I'll go through and do a little fabric tour at some point though, so I'll leave that separately. But other than those six things that I did buy at full price new, everything on this shelf was collected over the course of years and cost me total under $100. I have plans for just about all of it, but some of it I'm waiting until after I have the baby so that I know my new measurements and some of it is just not a priority right now. So like I said, this is specifically my work cabinet. I'm an ecclesiastical seamstress. When I tell people I'm a seamstress professionally, I feel a lot of imposter syndrome because I really am not that great. I do the same thing, same couple garments over and over and over again. So it's very um, specific. I only have to be good at a few things. I'm, I'm really not as talented as that makes me sound but but I love it I love the fabrics that I get to work with I love the work that I do see they're just so pretty so I don't know this one's inside out it's a lot prettier right side out obviously and surprise surprise more knickknacks yay knickknacks this one is actually the first teapot I ever collected. It got me started on my collecting journey. It is a music box. I wonder if it's all wound up. Anyway, so that was the first one. You can see it's broken and was badly repaired by me. Surprise, surprise. These are some of my more um, not novelty-ish ones. This one's really cool. You can get special tea for it that's like blooming and watch it unfurl. It's, it's really cool. Anyway, moving on. Wow, more teapots. <laughs> Here's different head pieces and hats, I guess. That was from my Foundations Revealed competition when we were doing the pictures. One of the pearls fell off, so I've got to replace that. Here's kind of my random catch-all. I don't know. It just is. More storage. And here I have UFOs and um, kind of my permanent patterns. And this is my UFOs, but also historical baby clothes because I just didn't know where else to put them. And this is a big one that I need help with. I am pretty new to quilting. I had a lot of people gift me quilting stuff um, just from my family and friends, etc. And I have no idea how to organize it. So if anybody has tips for organizing quilting cottons, please help. Look, there's more. This is my clothing rack. It's mostly work stuff. Um, a lot of this is things that need alterations or repairs, but some of it is stuff that I have sewn from scratch. Behind it here is a skirt that my cousin brought me from Senegal that is really wrinkly, so I never wear it, so I hung it up. Here's a quilt top someone gifted me that eventually I'll finish, and a Civil War vest for my husband that's in the works. I did not make this. My dear friend Catherine made it just kind of for fun and then gifted it to me because she's really sweet like that. This is a Regency dress that was gifted to me when I started my costuming journey and uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to wear it because of COVID. So she's waiting, I love you. More storage. This is actually not storage for sewing things. This is, oh, oh. this is, family history stuff that we rescued from our family home. It's got a lot of really cool stuff in it. Lots of cool pictures, lots of knickknacks like 
glasses and pocket watches and my husband and I just haven't had time to go through it yet but we're very excited for when we can this is a little work in progress that just travels with me moving on this is kind of the um, hectic part so I'm not really a knitter but I do enjoy it from time to time and I organized my yarn with a wine rack why not? This is all stuff I used to make soap, so it kind of sits there. That's the, I don't know what to categorize this as, bag. This is fake flowers. This is, I don't even remember what this is. Googly eyes, okay. This is like printing stuff, candle making stuff, quilt spray. Etc. More knickknacks and also useful storage things. This is a headpiece that I wore in my wedding and it's cut from my aunt's headpiece that she wore during her wedding. So really special to me. I want to do something nice, frame it. What even is in this? I don't know. I just keep doodads here. So needles that I don't really use that often. This is safety pins. This is, I think, fake pearls. Yep. This one, what? I don't, I just never remember what's in these. Oh, this one's jewelry making stuff. That one's buttons. I know that. That's why I put that there to remind me. Knitting needles. What's in here? Oh, this is all my grommet stuff. Isn't it cute? More buttons hiding back there. More buttons. I have a lot of buttons. These belonged to my great-great-grandmother. Great-great? No. Maybe. Maybe. Either great-grandmother or great-great. I can't remember. I'll have to ask my grandma. But these were recently passed to me. They were in my room at my grandma's house growing up. So that's cool. Bias tape maker. A empty picture frame. My cousin brought this back for me from China, so that's neat. I don't know. This is all embroidery stuff. Kind of random doodads. This is all stuff that goes with that sewing machine over there. My patterns. This is kind of the catch-all area of things that aren't very aesthetic but need a place to go. That is just sitting there temporarily because I have to deliver it to someone. It was for work. These are quilt blocks that I've been working on. I love them. I'll talk about the quilt in a different video probably. As I finish each block, I just store the leftover fabric in here because I have a friend who is also working on a quilt, so I'm just gonna give the scraps to her. This is my cabbage patch. Just scraps from old projects and such. They live in there. Here's a mirror. Hi, mirror. And here is my cutting table. It's, uh, it's a pool table and it actually works really, really well. Eventually we had intended on putting like a piece of wood across the top so it doesn't have this lip, but for now it is how it is. That is my fun project that I'm procrastinating on by making this video. It's in timeout. Here for my quilting, I just like to keep some pre-cut squares so that I don't have to do the white over and over and over again. And then I just kind of have a little handy dandy tool thing that lives there. So if you're setting up a sewing room, I highly recommend a large, large cutting space, whether that's something permanent like this or temporary where you roll it up and set it, <laughs> roll it up, roll it out and set it up. You know, it's just, it makes life a lot easier. So a few things that I would recommend that I don't have in here are lots and lots and lots of trash bins. Right now I only have the one and I want like at least three more. I want one over by that desk over there and I want one on either side of my cutting table. I am constantly finding myself just throwing little pieces of thread or scraps or whatever on the ground and that's just a huge pain to clean up later. So more trash bins. I would also recommend your own dedicated 
broom and dustpan for your sewing space. Right now I have to keep going back and forth between getting the one that belongs upstairs and using it down here and taking it back and it's just a pain that isn't really necessary. So I don't have that. I'm going to get one, uh, but that's something that I would recommend. Just that I don't see recommended that often when people are setting up sewing spaces that I think are very useful. To reiterate some things that I think are really useful when setting up your sewing space, when planning your sewing space are pegboards like this right by your machine so you don't have to get up all the time. Having a little area with your ironing tools right by your ironing board, very helpful. Planning out where to put your outlets, um, that, that's a big one. Ooh, good lighting. Let's talk about the lighting in here. So when picking this lighting, I did not think, what's the best lighting for YouTube? Because YouTube is my hobby and ultimately, I spend a lot of time in this room. So what mattered more to me wasn't really the cast of the lighting or if it was soft enough or whatever for video. It was, right. will I hate spending time down here because I feel like I'm living in a dungeon? So think about what your lighting needs are and light your room accordingly. So I picked a lot of very bright lighting and that's what I needed. So think about what you need, what's best for you lighting wise. I think even if you're sewing just for a hobby, a little whiteboard like I have, maybe not as structured like a calendar, but just where you can leave yourself notes is very helpful. I think lots of storage is very helpful. I think surrounding yourself with things that you enjoy will keep you more motivated. Fabric storage. Fabric storage is super important. I'm using like a cubby system right now Everybody has their their way of storing fabric, and I think just find what works for you. I like being able to see all my fabric. I think it's one, aesthetic, two, it keeps me motivated to work on projects because I can see it, like, look, it's looking at me. It's saying, show me. Ooh, ooh, my eyebrows are bad. COVID. So for me, being able to see my fabric is very helpful. For other people, you know, they don't use it as often or they have more of a stash where it doesn't come in and out as often. And so, you know, protecting your fabric from light and dust is a consideration there. So find what works for you, find your sewing style, and then find what works for you. I feel like I'm kind of rambling at this point. I hope any of that was helpful. I found videos like this really helpful when I was setting up my space, so I hope it just gives you a little something to ponder on. I don't think in any way this room is perfect. I There's still a lot I'm going to work on over time, maybe make it a little more aesthetically pleasing, a little more functional, but it works for me as it stands right now a lot more than my old space did. So I am very pleased. I am just on cloud nine, spending time in this room every day. I actually enjoy spending time down here. So my productivity levels have just skyrocketed so there's that you need to at least be able to appreciate that the space you're in is functional and assisting you and your productivity will go way up even if you don't necessarily like your space having a space that isn't actively working against you is a huge part of getting things done Editing Katie again, I just wanted to kind of reiterate that I think the most important thing here is making your space work for you. I'm going to use Bernadette Banner just because she's a really well-known name. She has a sewing room tour where she set up her sewing room and it is absolutely stunning. It's very aesthetic. She's got wall-to-wall -wall windows with gorgeous lighting. And if I tried to recreate that in my space, it would not work for me because she uses drawers and I would not do well with drawers for my fabric storage. She has all of this natural lighting that I do not have. So any supplement lighting wouldn't work with that. So her space is different from mine, different from my needs. And if I tried to just mimic that without evaluating what I needed and what I can create, it wouldn't work out well for me. 
Another example is my grandmother who lives in a mobile home and she has this amazing modular sewing space where everything tucks away very small and then she can pull it out and unfold and it really works for her and it works for her space. But something like that where I have room for a permanent sewing space would absolutely drive me crazy. So what works for other people is not necessarily what's going to work for you and that's okay. Don't feel pressured to just mimic what other people do, really evaluate what you need and I think you'll end up happier with your space for it. I love them. I think they're so pretty. They're very nostalgic. Nostalgic? I don't know if that's a word. They're very backlit. There we go.